Let's go ahead and get started today. We are having an open Q&A on our group, and um, we have a few people. We're going to have people continuing to, uh, to be added onto it, and hopefully we'll have a lot, um, a lot of really great questions. Does anybody want to start off with anybody, anything that, that you um, would like to know? Uh, just so you know, I'm Lisa. I'm one of the admins. We have Marcus. He's uh, remote right now. Go ahead and say something so they can see you. <laughs> I'll, I'll turn it on for a minute. You can all see my double chin. So, uh, hey, good morning. Uh, I think we have Stephanie and Maria, Tish and Alex. Um, yeah, Hello. it's an open Q&A. So uh, we're here to just chat about roundtable, whatever, whatever's on your mind, whether it's Facebook, uh, selling on Facebook or the weather, sports. We'll try to stay away from politics. So, yeah, that's and it. Sports, since I don't know anything about it. Go ahead. This what were you saying? This is Mark, Steffi's husband. My question is uh, to you guys, we've been selling on Facebook for quite a while now, and it seems to have been changing. And this has probably been asked many times, but the number of uh, views we get anymore really seems to drop. Is that because Facebook's going towards the, uh, the stores rather than the local sellers? Um, I want to address that. And then... Um... I would like Marcus to talk about that. And then if any of our group experts want to chime in, please do so after that. Uh, basically, back in the day, so to speak, uh, a year ago, when everything was just gangbusters crazy good, uh, we had some interesting things going on on Facebook. Number one, we were in the middle of a pandemic. We had um, you know, a lot of things that, that were selling, selling. People weren't able to get out of their homes as much. People wanted to be able to buy online. Plus, we had stimulus money. There was a lot of factors going on. Um, we also had people's um, stuff, their listings were actually in the news feed of their regular marketplace. So right now, you don't necessarily see somebody's listing in your regular marketplace, unless you have, um, an, unless they're like a friend, they're following you or something like that. And even then, they're not gonna see it unless they're going to marketplace. If you're a shop, you can see it, um, you know, in someone's newsfeed if they're following you. Right now, with everything that we have going on in our world today, with the increase in inflation, with the cost of uh, that it's costing us every month just to be able to live. They are saying it's $230 per month per household, which I think is grossly underestimated. Um, you know, you, we're seeing that people need another place to make money. So where are they going to go? Well, they've already got their regular job. They've got to go online. They're going to sell what they have. They're going to do everything they can to be able to make money. So, I think we have what's called a buyer's market, not a seller's market, where before it was more of a seller's market because you had uh, more buyers than sellers. Now we have more sellers than buyers and everybody's competing for that. That's a huge contributing factor. And then, of course, there's other contributing factors, but that's my first take on it. Marcus, do you want to add to that? I don't know how I can top that. So a uh, couple of things. Yeah, I I am. Um experienced the exactly what you're talking about i would routinely have over a hundred thousand views on uh on my you know seven day average or whatever that it showed um now it's i'm lucky right now i'm on the higher side for the last six months i'm probably peaking for considering the last six months at like thirty thousand. i think um one thing that happened so there was a little bit of change of reporting so i just answered this question in the main group today um as well there, I don't remember, and I ha I used to have the source um, where uh, Facebook talked about this, but it used to be views. So it used to be views, and then later on, before they actually changed the wording, it changed to, to clicks. And so uh, my understanding of that, and based on what I read at the time, uh, a view is simply like, if you're familiar with Facebook ads, it's an impression. Somebody sees your item, it scrolls across their fa their feed or it scrolls, they search for, for widget and they're scrolling through all the returns on Marketplace and they see your, your item. They don't actually click into it. 
Um, at one point, then they switched it to where it's now a, uh, a click through and they actually have to see, they actually have to click onto it. So that, that would account for, for some of it. That doesn't necessarily account for the drop in sales, right? Because that's just a, a reporting metric. Um, everything, I, I would second everything Lisa said. It's gotten a lot more competitive um, where I could routinely find items that no one else was selling. Um, that is a lot harder now. So now I have to put in the work to make sure my item, my item stands out from what uh, my, my competition on there is. So not only do I have to do research to find what item is selling, uh, I have to find out, I have to do research on Facebook to make sure that my item stands out. Um, and that's just all of your standard, making sure your first picture is good, your titles. That's, that's uh, perfect. Yeah, your titles yeah. SEO optimized, your description is uh, is optimized for the Facebook shopper um, and, and, and things like that. So uh, not too different from what, what Lisa said, just wanted to kind of clarify a little bit of the, uh, there was a reporting change that happened as well. And there's, there's other ways, exactly. And there's other ways that you can um, up the, uh, you know, the thing, your listings to be able to get more views because it, Facebook does have an algorithm. And what we're seeing is uh, when you put it up there and it's getting interaction from people, the clicks, like what he's talking about, then it's more likely to be pushed closer to the top because it, it's, it's done that. Um, we've seen people who have um, what we call bump groups uh, where they help each other out and they look at each other, you know, they post the listing to their, their little group on uh, via messenger or a small group that they've made and they interact with each other on those uh those, those listings, listings to help to help push them push up them because, because they're showing they're facebook, showing that, facebook is that is available really good question does anybody else want to comment, comment on that, on that or, or yeah i'll say something something oh, go ahead. right quick this, this is alex um, um shameless plug i I write a I write series, series called, called Marketing, Marketing Minute, Minute in the general group general that group speaks that to speaks the to best practices that Marcus and Lisa are alluding to, to give you an edge. And it really is to be even. Um, so when you have great titles, great descriptions, photos, et cetera, all the best practices is what I'll, I'll coin it. You're really going to relieve a lot of stress. It'll make you feel better knowing that you are doing the very best that is recommended by Facebook and people that are promoting their products everywhere so check it out it's under the topics in the general group and if you start there you'll mitigate a lot of stress sour feelings confusion anxiousness uh lack of clarity because you know that you'll be following best practices that the professionals use and then there's other tactics you, out Alex. there like bunk groups lisa said etc 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 exactly i'm sorry, I'm if, sorry it, if it, it sounds, it like, sounds I'm like i'm interrupting, interrupting you, you. Um, um, i think that, I think my, feed think that my feed was, was a little bit delayed, delayed on that, on that. Um, I'm getting a little bit of feedback from somebody. Uh, if you're if you're t uh, not talking, can you please mute yourself? Alex, this is Maria. Um, so, in the information that you have, oh, sorry. So go ahead, Maria. Can you unmute yourself? Yourself? Yeah. You, there you, you go. There you go. <laughs> I, 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 I I muted I, I you because I thought you were on the phone. On the phone. <laughs> Um, go ahead, no, Alex, Alex, Alex. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, a question for Alex on what you just said about the information that you have. Um, does it give any perspective on people that sell onesie twosie items? And when I say onesie twosie, I mean like I sell. I have a full time job. Um, I'm in global procurement, but then I sell things, household, our household things on the side instead of donating everything i figure you know i can get a little bit of money out of this or money out of that and i put it in a special fund one day i'd like to have an in-ground pool um so is there any information to help people like me who sell um their kids used clothing some of which has never been worn um other household items you know stuff that's in really good condition because I, it's not like I'm selling a hundred of something and I can rely on all those clicks. So I'm just curious about that perspective. 
Hey, good question. Can you very quickly explain the onesie twosie concept again? What does that mean? Yeah, so I sell things from our home that we no longer use or need. Um, so it could be children's toys that are in good condition, it could be children's clothes, it could be um, designer clothes that I don't wear anymore. Um, any of that kind of stuff that you just, you're kind of doing a purge. So that's called onesie twosies? Yeah, that's what I'm calling onesie twosies. It's not like I have a hundred of this specific fidget. I have an item here and an item there. Now I get now it. Now I get it. Yeah. Should understand. Should understand. Okay, great. Okay, great. <laughs> so so, so what, what I specifically, I specifically created, created evergreen, evergreen best, best practices, practices in the marketing minute. minute. So the answer is the answer yes, is to, yes your question. to your question. It's onesies, twosies, it's furniture, it could be plant, it could be candles, it could be clothing, et cetera, et cetera. So the answer is yes, because the best practices covers those different verticals. So that's why I created it evergreen. It's not a hyper specific, it's best practices that will put you uh, on the winning side of promoting your item before you have to pay for boosts. Thank you, Alex. That was awesome. Uh, Marcus, you had something? Yeah, I was going to add to that a little bit. It's uh, That's a been a big change over the last two to three years or two years is uh, Facebook started with just selling stuff from your garage, right? It was just selling, selling, you know, whatever. Uh, and that's, I think, how maybe the originally thought that they were going to do it. But then as things change, they see this, you know, bigger, they have a bigger platform and they've morphed into this um, being able to sell multiple quantities. As soon as they offered shipping and the ability to sell multiple quantities, it changed the dynamic for the people selling individual items. And uh, I, unfortunately, I think that makes it just that much harder. You, your listing has to be that much, that much better where a year ago you could throw up a quick, quick picture front back side write a quick description well now you're going up against professionals that are on there that do this for a living um and drop shippers love them or hate them i'm one so don't don't hate me too much uh that's what we do is we, we try to perfect it as much as we can to try to try to use the platform and so there i don't think there is a good a good answer other than you got to be you got to be better than your competition out there and uh, there's some really easy stuff with with uh, titles and and keywords. And um, it's not like, you, you know, you don't have to go to school for a year to figure it out. Uh, what Alex has put up is is really good, solid, you know, things, clothing, for example. One of the biggest ones that we find and, and you probably do this yourself. But one of the biggest things that we find with clothing is sellers won't have the, the size in the first half of the title. So. That's a huge, yeah, well, it happens all the time. So someone will say, hey, can you take a look at my item? It's not selling. And I'll do a quick little review. And I'm like, I don't know what this is, just based on the title and the picture. And so um, where a year ago, that item would sell because people would, there wasn't a lot of competition. People would click on it. And so it's making those those adjustments and and uh, you just got to have have better quality listings um, than before. There, there is no magic magic button. I wish there was. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank and you. I did and want I to um, um, say thank you to uh, Alex for his shout out to himself for his marketing minute. He puts in a lot of effort every, uh, every Saturday to put that stuff together and he puts videos and everything. So even if you just go back and, and look at those Saturday marketing minutes, there's so much information that, that you can learn. Uh, we have Tish and then Chris Dunrud. I hope I said that right, Chris. Go ahead, uh, Tish. Um, I want to testament. I definitely um, creative swipe Alex a lot. Um, <laughs> so I watch his stuff every Saturday. Um, but I am kind of a, a hybrid. I don't do any drop shipping. Everything I have is in my house. And I don't hate you, Marcus. I am jealous every time I walk into my overly filled basement. Um, but I do a lot of option buying. So I will buy either in bulk or I will go to an estate sale and buy a single depression glass that I want to sell. So I do both, as you refer to them as onesie twosies, as well as the multiples. And but I find my 
avenue when I post it is the same for whatever it is. I research it. I write the description as if it were in a store with bullet points. Because as a buyer, I hate walking in and looking at an item and see a one sentence description. When it's a pair of pants, I have a literally have the dimensions and then I have a diagram of where I took those dimensions. If it's a thigh width, where did I take that thigh width? You know, so just look at it as if you're buying it at a store, what all the information you want. And I, I see you can't over describe in the, in, the in the description. Maybe other people disagree, but I feel you can't over describe something. No one's gonna complain that you called it an off blue versus a, you know, a dark blue versus a light blue. You know, I mean, I feel like the more information, the better. And I feel like that's not gonna be a complete selling change, but it could be the difference between a click and a buy. And when you add things like light blue or off blue or light gray, you're actually adding attributes to your listing that that when someone types in gray or they say light blue, it's going to get higher in the search engine because you have given more information on it than not. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, thank you. Um, I'm recently new to this group and I'm learning lots in the group. One of the things that really uh, was very helpful from the beginning is when I found a post and a video, Lisa and someone else did with uh, how to delete old posts, sold items, because I have never been able to delete anything that I've shipped. So going into the activity log, to be able to do that. So I'm working my way through a year and a half of posts of deleting right now. But um, a couple of questions that might be uh, useful. Is there a, a good recommendation for a title length? So I sell primarily clothing and jewelry. And so with my clothing, I always start with the brand and then the size and then a brief description in the title. But is there a length recommendation? When you say down. link recommendation, what do you mean? Like, well, maybe, like, number a, of characters like maybe a sample or, of what it should look like? Yeah, number of characters or words or or is there is there, I know you can only put in so many, but is there something that's proven as a good amount versus too much or not, not enough? Yeah, go ahead, Marcus, please answer. I wish we knew, but we don't. Uh, Facebook is very vague on uh telling us what to do um what i've found and what i've read and just through absorption from other sellers is um to use the majority of the space that you're given but the first one third should be the impact for the item so the you know 90 percent of your information should be in the first one third and then you can carry on the rest through through the rest of the uh the space, I think it's 99 characters that they give you, I, I believe 90 or 99. Um, I always get shops and marketplace mixed up. I think shops, maybe 99, maybe you have 150 in marketplace. Anyway, you, I mean, you can figure out how many you have. Um, and then also to use, uh, and I'll try to source this for the playback or the recording, um, to use natural language, not keyword stuffing. So uh, eBay, really want ebay pushes i mean they almost tell you flat out to use keyword like really like 3x shirt green uh tommy bahama you know it, it's just really keyword it's not a natural sounding title where if you were to go to the store and read a tag it's got a natural sounding title um same thing for the for the descriptions that you use natural uh natural speak i guess um other than that, there, there, I don't think there's any concrete thing that we'll find out there. It's just kind of through trial and error. Um, but to use the full amount, and that goes for the same thing with pictures. Um, they give you 10. They give you slots for 10 whenever possible. I mean, I know always you can't. I don't think there's a benefit to filling up 10 just to fill up 10, just so that you have 10 images in there. But if if you can provide 10 quality images, that uh that makes sense you're not just stuffing an image in there just so that you have 10 um that's important too to have you know because that's how people buy they, they go to the image they start clicking through the images to see the barely i mean as sellers we all know that they don't read the descriptions very often it's more the images that uh that get viewed so if you can put 10 in there and it makes sense 
to have 10, uh, it's not awkward having 10, then, then to do that as well. But hope that helps. Yeah, and one other question is around the tags or tagging. Um, is there a list of recommended categories uh, for, let's say, clothing? You know, I put ladies, fashion, women's clothing, you know, some tags like that, and then blazer or jack, you know, some, but is there a list of recommended categories or tags? So I, I can speak to that a little bit too, Lisa. Um, I haven't had yeah, tags since about, since about May of last year. Uh, it's a feature that uh, I was told, and I believe I've seen it in the, in the official group, uh, just so everybody knows, we're not official Facebook. We're just we're just folks. <laughs> uh, um, I believe I saw it in the official group too that they're mostly phasing that out. So I'm actually surprised that you still have it, have that feature. Um, uh, the way that it was described to me is that the keyword search or the keyword functions now, what the algorithm is going to look for for keywords is in the title and description. So honestly, I, I wouldn't put a, if it was me and I had an account that had tags and I heard this. I, I would just do naturally what you think um, works, you know, just kind of uh, there's there's some tools out there that do keyword research pretty well. Uh, Google keywords is one that's really easy and it's free um, to find alternative keywords to what you're doing. But um, honestly, it doesn't really most accounts don't have it anymore. And I do need to drop off and take this call real quick. Thank you. Lisa, may I give a counter thought? You're fine. Uh Yes, absolutely. Go ahead, Alex. So I come from a 20 year design and marketing background. Um, I want to give you a counter thought and say that there's two things. One, there's a paradigm shift. Whether you realize it consciously or not, all of us in this group and whoever will watch this are taking a crash course in digital marketing. The kinds of words and phraseology we're using is across the board. There's about nine or so plus channels on in the world of digital marketing and my take is i'm going to add those tags in based upon natural um, common sense when i'm thinking about do i want a blue pair of jeans bright red pair of jeans etc cetera, etc cetera. i have a a marketing minute post on titles and and i think i mentioned in one of them tags as well for two reasons number one you got to practice thinking, uh, going beyond yourself and what you're looking for and think like uh, someone who's preparing information for an end user to experience. So that's the one reason why I would put tags. You don't have to put many. You have a limit of 20, but start practicing. This is a recommendation. I still do it. I'm maybe one of the few that still has access to tags in my listings. My other thought is Facebook is big. They want our money. So for them to totally get rid of tags altogether um, seems a little strange to me. They may use the concept of tags, maybe through categories, by more granularly breaking down the categories to be more specific. In fact, uh, when I create listings, I see that Facebook is recommending categories, and they've done a little bit of a better job of telling me what my picture frame category should be in or what my desk that I'm trying to sell retail wise. So I could choose from a list of uh, from there. So that's my use case for tags. One is to continue to practice. And two, uh, it's because at some point, I just don't think a big company like Facebook is going to move away from tags when that's a, a fundamental fixture in trying to make it easy for people to um, search through categories. So whether it helps algorithm or not, I don't know, but I'm gonna use it. And in all my listings, you'll find that as long as I have that option, I'm going to use it. It doesn't hurt, may take a, a minute or two extra, but I already mentioned for good practice and since we're all using a crash course, uh, we're, we're selling and it's kind of a crash course to become a quote unquote marketing expert, to, again, to position your product uh, a little bit more favorably uh, compared to another seller, I, I recommend doing that. Thank you, Alex. Um, I've got two things, uh, Chris, and I, I, I feel like you had a really great question. One of the things that you want to remember, um, our group, 
grows so rapidly. And a lot of people probably haven't heard this before, but several months back, uh, one of the, our group members realized that when she put on her clothes, like 2T or 3X or size 12, right at the very beginning, that a lot more people saw it versus otherwise when you had it in the middle to the end, because they're looking on their phones like this, okay? And, and the amount of space or the amount of real estate, so to speak, that you're looking at when you're scrolling through your phone is a lot smaller. So as much important information as you can get, if they can see that there's a shirt, as quickly as you can tell them it's a size children's 2T, as you can, the better off you are. Uh, but anyway, that was a really great question. The other thing, um, before I get to two other questions, we're going to do Maria first and then Jennifer. Um, Alex is a group expert. And then we also have Tish, who's a group expert, who's joining us today on our call. So um, Alex is a marketing expert. I know we kind of already talked about that, but also Tish, um, she does online auctions and things like that. And I am thankful uh, for you guys to be joining us today. Um, Maria, you want to go ahead and ask your question? And then after that, we'll go to Jennifer R. Unmute yourself, please. Um, yes, thank you, Alex, for answering my question earlier. Um, and apparently I should probably trademark onesie twosie because I've heard Tish refer to it. Um, <laughs> curious, um, you know, with what I sell, I have found that it is far more difficult to sell on Facebook Marketplace now than it was a year or two ago. I didn't used to offer shipping. Um, I used to only do local. I noticed that the local sales were kind of falling off and, oh, maybe I should start doing shipping and my sales increased because of that. Now, my question is, is Facebook Marketplace the best place for me to be selling? I'm trying to evaluate, I have some vintage toys to sell um, and other things. And I'm trying to determine which platform would be best. Does anybody have any insight into that? Like I have, you know, designer clothes that I want to sell, vintage toys from the 80s, um, porcelain dolls that my grandmother painted that, I mean, I don't need this stuff. I don't want this stuff. That's actually a really great question. Really question and I would love to be able to, to answer, answer that, that uh, for you. For you. Um, um, basically, I, I sell on lots of different platforms. I'm very open about that. Facebook is not my only platform. I sell on eBay. I sell on uh, Mercari. Um, I even have some stuff on Amazon. But in order for me to do that, I put everything on everything. Um, and so I use a cross-posting app to be able to do that. For me, I use um, List Perfectly. There's other, um, there's other apps out there that can be used. Uh, anybody who wants to try it, you can always use our group's um, code to get 30% off. I think it's Marketplace Sellers um, if you wanted to do that. But I use that to be able to track. and be able, So when something sells on eBay and I have it listed on Facebook and maybe even Poshmark, I can go in and instantly take it off. There's always a risk of selling it in two places and where you might have to cancel a listing. But what it does is it it expands out your reach um, because a lot of times when one when one platform is going gangbusters, another one isn't as much. But thank you for that question. Um, Jennifer, R, question? You need to unmute yourself, sweetie. It's not unmuting you. I can't unmute you. Maybe she could type it in. We can go to the next question and come back. Is that okay? Yeah, that, that sounds good. Is there anybody else who has another question while she types it in? Well, piggybacking on your last uh, comment, Lisa, about multiple platforms, because the fees vary from platform to platform, do you list at different prices in different platforms or do you list at the highest price that you need, let's mm -hmm. say from eBay's fees, and that's the same price that you're going to put it on Facebook, and you'll come out better if it sells on Facebook. 
a lot of times I, I sell the same on all of the platforms, but sometimes I will take that into consideration depending on, you know, what I have invested in the item. So um, I do both um, on um, drop shipping and also reselling where, you know, I go into thrift stores or I'll even go on marketplace and, and look for buys and, and purchase straight from sellers like you guys and turn around and sell them straight back on marketplace or eBay or, you know, all the different plat platforms that are available. So, um, you know, I, I, now I totally forgot the question. I'm sorry. I feel like if, I'm if your old. prices vary from platform to platform. Oh, my prices don't vary. And, and that's another good point. That's what, that's what I was uh, trying to get to. Facebook only charges 5% right now. If you think about the cost to be able to run a business at 5%, you're, it's basically free if you think about it. I see people make comments like they're making so much money on us. Well, they're not making money on us. They're making money on the advertising on the side. But as far as you as a seller, they're making zero because it costs money to charge on the credit cards. It costs money to hire the employees um, to be able to uh, keep track of our sales tax, to submit them for us and to do all of those things. So right now we're at an advantage. And a lot of the reason why we have so many sellers on here is because it is so cheap. You go to some of those other platforms that are charging 15, 20 percent, um, you know, in those ranges and stuff. It's very justified as far as their prices go. But we're just. We're very blessed to be in, the, in this situation right now. Anyway, that was just kind of a little side comment. Jennifer, were you able to figure out um, how to unmute yourself? Okay, I'm sorry, sweetie. If you want to uh, message me personally and ask your question, I'm happy to answer it um, for you. Kish, did you have say, uh, something to say? I just wanted to comment on the multiple platforms. Um, I too sell on about four different platforms and I put everything on all my platforms. Um, I'm more anal retentive than Lisa. I so am a control freak. I post each thing individually, but I create the listing on a Word document or Google Docs, copy paste. So I'm not retyping it every time, but I like to control every little aspect because I'm anal like that. Um, <laughs> but I've noticed that there isn't one platform that sells one thing better. In my head, I thought, okay, Etsy and not Etsy, um, Macari and eBay would be my vintage stuff. eBay would be my new stuff. Uh, Facebook would be my used stuff and or slightly newer vintage. That is not the case at all. I literally have sold vintage on all my sites, new on all my sites, used on all my sites. And I, I can't seem to see a pattern in it. Um, but I do adjust my prices based on what it's where it's at because certain platforms do better with like Macari, for example. Uh, does where you can make when somebody likes your item or saves it is in the case of Facebook does it's a like on Macari you can send them an offer as soon as they like it and you can send offers every three days so I price my items my six dollar jeans on Facebook are twelve dollars they start at Macari and then when you quote unquote promote it for free ten a day I drop the price by a dollar and I can send an offer but your offers always have to be less than your lowest so the first person you offer ten dollars next person has to be nine next person has to be eight so it's higher knowing that I'm eventually going to get to six to eight. And then eBay is a set, just a slightly higher price. Maria? Sure, thank you. Um, so Tish, I understand new versus used versus vintage. There not being really any difference among the platforms. What about categories? Like clothing versus um, vintage toys versus other types of goods. I honestly, I honestly haven't seen it. I've sold vintage, vintage stamps, stamps on all three, on all three sites. sites. I sell, I sell new jeans and new shirts shirt. on all three sites. I sell vintage uranium glass, which I never thought would be a thing on Macari and or Facebook. I'm selling them just as many there as I am on eBay. So I, I'm sure there probably is. I personally haven't seen it. I don't sell everything, but I, I feel I sell a pretty good splattering of enough things to get a general idea. I'm not a huge seller. I don't sell thousands a month, but I'm a consistent anywhere from two to 10 items a day selling. So, I mean, I feel like I sell pretty decently, but I'm obviously not a, a conglomerate <laughs> by any means. Thank you. That was excellent. Does anybody else have any questions or comments that you'd like to raise? I'd like to mention one thing. This is the marketing side coming in again to reinforce this paradigm shift that I think is happening organically. 
when we create documents that can track this, it makes sense to either, if you want the simpler route, um, like Lisa, it sounds like you were saying, one price for all platforms, that might be in a time efficiency play. But don't front, I mean, don't, don't, don't sleep on the fact that what she's not saying is she's organizing all of this to even to Tisha's point on a document, writing things down so you can copy and paste. Secondly, in the spirit of being anal retentive, uh, or maybe I might say uh, being meticulous and, and planning, um, hey, makes sense that if Macari attracts a higher spending crowd, why wouldn't you naturally take advantage of the possibility to, you know, 2x your, your retail, uh, your, your markup, right? So if she, uh, if she gets it at whatever it is, she sells it on one platform for six, Macari for 12, and then she's anchoring the higher price, meaning she's planting the seed psychologically in the mind of the potential buyer. And then you're finagling, you know, kind of like what people do in the marketplace. They love negotiating. It, it gives them a sense of power, gives them a sense of I'm getting a great deal. That feeling translates to, you know, I don't mind giving my Visa card for this. I got a good deal. Oh, my gosh, I really like this platform. So there's a psychology uh, element, there's an organizational element, and at the end of the day, you're meeting people's needs and or quote unquote, their perceived wants, right? Um, so the marketing side says this is a psychological uh, 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 issue here. This is also an organizational issue here. We got to get our minds out of consumer and into producing mode where we wanna track and organize so that we can control the levers and do either the simpler route like Lisa mentioned or the more detailed route like, like Tish uh, mentioned. And I, and I think that would cause you to feel better, um, make the mental energy you give out for this kind of work uh, less. So it's more smoother and you won't, you'll feel better about this quote unquote side hustle that you sort of systemizing and I think that that's a great outcome for, for this kind of work. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I should probably mention also, we have a another group that is a smaller paid group that we have. Um, our big group that we have right here is over 13,000 members. We have a smaller, uh, more intimate group called the Online Sellers Network, where we are also right now focusing on other platforms other than just uh, Facebook Marketplace. So if you're interested in joining that, you can go to our website, which is marketplace-sellers forward slash um, login, and you can read about that platform. Uh, this uh, Today, we actually did a, a great introduction to online uh, Amazon online arbitrage and also understanding you know, how we can use some virtual assistance um, in our marketplace. Next week, we're going to be doing a little bit more of a deep dive on the Amazon, and then we will also be moving into things like eBay. So if anybody's interested in, in being part of that, um, it is called our Online Sellers Network, and you can go to the um, uh, our, our, um, our website and be able to find out more about that. Um, is there any other questions, uh, people, that uh, any of you guys have about Facebook Marketplace? <laughs> that was my I, I do quite my a lot of tracking and stuff for for my um selling on Facebook. It is Good. my side hustle. I work full time from home and then side hustle with this. And I feel like I'm doing pretty good at it. Um I think I'm netting a thousand to two thousand a month um as a side hustle. I I like mm -hmm. that. And it's fun flipping for me. Um, but coming to this group. Um, I'm learning a lot, but is there a way to encourage more positivity in the post? Because it seems like there's mm -hmm. most all negative comments about Facebook yes. problems. And so, yeah. So we have we have one, two, three, five people that are moderating the group at all times. Um, we are looking for more moderators right now. Uh, the rules that we have are are very set in stone. One of them is no Facebook bashing because we don't want to, you know, diss the hand that feeds us, so to speak. We realize that Facebook has 
a lot of problems that they're constantly working through, bugs, issues, and we could sit and, and name a myriad of them, um, including even payout issues for, uh, for people. Um, we also don't allow swearing, even things like acronyms um, where, you know, where people would say LOL, but it's in the form of a swear word. Those, those type of comments, we're constantly taking them down. You might even still see them. We do not allow any kind of uh, people being rude to each other or, uh, or any of that stuff. And people forget, and we also are not advertising without any kind of admin approval. Um, we realize that people are a part of many, many groups, and we try really hard to keep it condensed and more positive. This is why we have our group experts who are constantly contributing to the platform like Alex, who does a marketing minute, um, sometimes we'll do a fix it Friday. We have our toot your horn Tuesday. Um, but realistically people love negativity for some reason, and they love to feed off of other people's negativity. And I wish it was different than that. And hopefully we can, we can continue to promote the positive because technically that's what, that's what we want. I created this group originally to be able to help sellers because I saw a huge need uh, the original or uh, the official marketplace group just felt like it was super, super negative. And as this group has grown into what it has, of course, we're going to get the negative. Um, we try really hard to let people say how they feel and, and be able to, to do that. But, you know, we don't really encourage the, all that. I, if anybody has suggestions on how we can fix it, great. And sometimes people get really angry when something gets denied because, you know, we've seen it over and over and over again. All they have to do is search, but they don't search and then they get mad and then they put a post in something else that doesn't have anything to do with it because they wanted to get heard and they make sure that everybody knows that they got that their post was denied, but it wasn't really against them. Does that make sense? Maybe that was way too big of an explanation for it, but, you know, I... I started this group to be able to help people. I brought Marcus on because I felt like he was an amazing person and had the heart for it. And I also knew I couldn't take it all on myself. And so I made him a, a full partner. So between him and I and all of the group experts and all of the moderators, we really try hard to be able to do that. And I sure do appreciate the people who, who like to put in positive, um, who like to show their their, their good things and the things that happen to them that, that are wins, because we want to see that kind of stuff. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox. Go ahead, um, Marcus, and then Tish. Did I talk too much? Nope, Mar there I'm you talking are. away to myself in my car. Oh, as okay. usual, it's not <laughs> like I don't do this every day for a living, so. Um, Thank you, Chris, for 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 bringing that up. And it's a um, it, I I can tell you that it's constantly we are on the admin side and the moderator group. Um, that is the top top priority on our list of. I I never thought I'd be like wrangling thirteen thousand people in a group uh, six months ago. I wouldn't have guessed that. And it's uh it's definitely a unique experience. But um, thank you for bringing that up, and we'll. Uh, anytime we get feedback, uh, we we take it truly, truly to heart, and uh, and try to do the best that we can. We we do know that, uh, and we recognize, and that's why we do allow a little bit of it. Uh, is often the 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 situations that people are in are really hitting the root, like root, like their money. <laughs> that's a big one. And you know, everybody's money situation is different. You sound like the situation I'm in, this is all side for me. It's all, it, if I, if I, if I make a thousand dollars this month, that's great. If I don't, I still have, you know, maybe I'm going to drink uh, middle shelf bourbon instead of top shelf bourbon. You know, it's not, uh, but there are other people that this is their primary source of income and that's how they pay their, their mortgage and their power and their feed their family. And so we totally get that. Um, and we and we, we we try to balance that. So, all right, back to you, Lisa. Tish, and then Alex. I I'll be really quick. I just feel with thirteen thousand people, 
we're gonna get negativity. And unless we literally lock it down and and have many, many, many moderators looking over every post and every comment, we'll never <laughs> dwindle it down. But hopefully, I I tend to be one of those half full kind of people, and I'm bubbly. And but you know, when they mess with my money, I too found myself going, "What the?" <laughs> And wanted to lash out, but I think in this day and age, everyone tends to spit out whatever comes to their mouth out of the first thing that comes to their mind before thinking about how is anyone else going to perceive what I say. So unfortunately, online in general has become negative, and we are just a product thereof. <laughs> we can moderate it as best we can, but it's unfortunately going to filter out a little bit. Thank you, Tish. Alex? Thank you. I wanted to give a, a food for thought. Um, it, so we know that life has to have balance. And so freedom of expression is really important. However, in the spirit of constructive criticism, I think when we have, when we're not bogged down by other thoughts and things, we can discern when somebody is sharing what perceives to be a negative, but it's not in a negative spirit. I, I think we can all tell the difference that it's okay to share that there needs to be improvement and everybody has their own preference for language to communicate that if we can distinguish the spirit if it's in a constructive way I, I think we could spin it without having to oh my gosh that was weird let me just cover it up or put it under the rug when we observe that there's a, a negative spirit in things meaning your intent is maybe more on the evilish side that's not helping anybody However, the freedom of expression in a general group of 12,000 people to have even a small percentage, I think, is part of the ingredient and a recipe of a healthy community. If you have all positive, that is weird. I want to make that an official, official statement to make. Life is not all positive. However, if it's in an evil spirit kind of thing, then we can monitor that and hold that accountable. To my next point, uh, accountability is part of the business community. Uh, for those of us who are inching or who are in the middle of this being a side hustle and taking it more seriously rather than, oh, I have some some winter things I just want to get rid of, you, you must adhere to even some unwritten guidelines and rules of the business community. One, you're going to be criticized. Two, not everybody's going to like your stuff. Three, you're going to have criticism. And it helps you to build tough skin and, more importantly, character development. In order to be successful, whether this is a side hustle or full hustle, whether you sell on one platform or multiple platforms, you've got to be able to have tough skin, but more importantly, develop character. This will help you to consciously choose not to react negatively when someone craps on your listing, disses you, threatens you because your product seems like it's a quote unquote scam, et cetera, et cetera. And lastly, um, you know, sometimes there is a loss financially because Maybe there was a refund or some technical thing or whatever the fill in the blank issue is. And as part of doing business in the community openly is being able to factor in the loss. Some businesses, they call it a loss leader. You sell at cost or under cost so that you can gain a name and an email for the privilege to try to solicit them later on. Again, this is part marketing best practices that you'll find in any industry but also just trying to elevate ourselves consciously to say, hey, you know what? Uh, just because there's such low fees on Marketplace doesn't mean I can come in with my baggage. No, there is an etiquette. There's a maturity you have to develop along the way. And it goes un unsaid. But I think in forums like this that Lisa Marcus put together allows us to speak about it um, consciously that you must develop good character and good business ethics and practices in order for you to be successful. Because it's not just about the money and the sale that you made. It's also about you and your personhood and being able to bring your best uh, person forward consistently, not just once a month, what have you. So, Thank you so much. Um, Want to wrap everything up today. Um, I want to thank our group experts for joining us and contributing what you did. Uh, I believe that Marcus had to go early today, but I will speak for him in telling you that we appreciate all of you guys. We're also always open for any kind of suggestions. If you ever need help um, on your uh, where you want to be able to find somebody to help you specifically, you can go to our website, which is marketplace-sellers.com. And in our group experts section, you can find people like Alex, people like Tish, 
uh, me, Marcus, or any of our other group experts that you might need help on even in a specific um, subject. We really do appreciate you guys for coming. We will have another Q&A uh, the first Wednesday of May. So feel free to come and join us. And again, if you guys have anything you want to talk about, post it. We're happy to, to be there for you guys. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Good to see everybody. Thank you guys.